All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, if you're watching this on Facebook Live or if you're watching this on YouTube on a recorded message that I send you, uh, this is some updates from the Point Church and what's going on. Uh, so right now, right away, I'm going to let you know that we are not having services at the Point for this week or for next week. Uh, that would be for the 22nd and the 29th of March. Uh, we have been directed by the Church of the Nazarene and our district to go ahead and make sure that we uh, postpone and avoid as much face-to-face -face and in-person contact with our parishioners and with the congregation and encourage our congregation to do the same at least through the beginning of this month, this next month. And uh, so in order to help facilitate that, we are canceling the face-to-face -face times that are in person at the point for Bible studies, for small groups, and for our worship times. Now, what that might mean is that we're going to be incorporating some more video um, small groups. I know we have uh, the capability of using Zoom, thanks to Sue Ann Cavanaugh and, and her offering that to us uh, Wednesday night. I'm looking back and forth between two cameras if you're watching this so that the people on YouTube are seeing as me as if I'm looking at them. <laughs> uh, but we'll be doing some small groups, um, starting probably, actually we started on this last Wednesday night, and uh, I think it was pretty successful. We had our first board meeting via Zoom, and uh, had everyone in attendance. That was a great meeting, and I'll give you some updates on that shortly as well. Uh, but we'll be doing more of that. We'll also have this coming Sunday, a uh, a video message again now many of you are aware that that joe woods did pass his uh very small funeral uh, or service celebration of life service is going to be taking place on sunday and i had some people ask if we could do more of a facebook live message that there was something lost in uh, for them as far as the personalness or maybe the connection by not doing it live um, I'll, I'll tell you a couple reasons why I'm not doing it live right now. One is that because we have a number of people who are not live on Facebook. Uh, they don't have Facebook accounts. And so by pre-recording it to YouTube, we can go ahead, I can go ahead and take an email that to them. I can also text a link and people can pick, typically pick that up then on their smartphone. And we can get the message out of what's going on both ways. Uh, we are working on trying to do some more live streaming, but in a sense, it's me and my son, Aiden, who are working on this. And I uh, appreciate your patience as we try to work towards getting something more for a live stream through both our email, I mean, through our website and through Facebook then. And hopefully then in a week or so to come, we'll be able to do some more of that. As a board, we met the other night and we addressed the reality of facing, that people are facing in not having face-to-face -face contact. In other words, we're, we're addressing the fact that we've got people who are going to be um, in their homes for extended periods of time, some who are seniors, some who are more at-risk groups uh, of young children and parents and family members. So what we're doing in relation to that is encouraging people to make contact. And, and I'm not talking about virtual contact. I'm not talking about sending a text or, or a Facebook message. But this last week, uh, Jan Patterson went ahead and e emailed to hopefully everybody a current contact directory for the congregation members of the point. And if you received that, then the challenge was also presented to you to make sure that you're calling at least one person every day. And, and when I say at least one person, I'm not talking about the same person. I'm talking about people who you may not typically talk to people who you may not typically consider calling, going through and, and calling both male and female. You know, everybody, even in a couple, needs to feel like they're being ministered to by individuals from their church. So the encouragement here is that you would take and you would move your way through the directory. Now, if you're working at home or if you're off work, the encouragement then to you is to take a challenge and maybe do five. Five phone calls significant phone calls before 5 p.m. so that you can then also not only understand what they're going through, 
but offer encouragement to them and then also pray with them. That's the biggest thing I think that I've discovered in my times of my phone calls so far is that when you end with prayer and you ask what the people need or you listen very closely as they're sharing their needs and you close in prayer praying for those needs, we're reconnecting the spiritual aspect that God has called us to engage in. Not just the physical, but the spiritual. And so my challenge and my call to the congregation is to not just call, but offer the movement of the Spirit to intervene in that relationship through a time of prayer to close with. And that can be you just simply praying for that person you just called. Uh, so I, I think by us doing that, we should be able to hit our households uh, each week. We, everyone should be getting phone calls. Uh, we should be getting multiple phone calls a week. Uh, I had a phone call just today. And uh, I want to give a, a shout out to Omar because he realized that, you know, as a pastor, how many times people are calling and checking in on you. And, you know, I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm personally not thinking about that. But that was very sensitive of him. And I appreciated that. And there's a lot of people who wonder, have they been called? Uh, do they need to get called again? Do they need to get called again? Uh, take notes. Maybe start, grab yourself a pad of paper and start taking notes every time you phone call somebody and then follow up with that phone call a little bit later on and see what's going on. Just had some conversations with, uh, with Lenore and Pat Patterson. Wonderful couple. They're going to be really isolated over the next several weeks. Uh, they had some things that happened. Lenore had some things that happened in her life. And I'm going to be following up and calling. I'm going to be following up and calling on che checking on Pat. Um, and, and there's other people in the congregation where maybe they're off work for, for now. And because they're off work, they're kind of worried about their finances. They're worried about maybe their groceries or something. You know, following up with that. Doctor's visits, appointments, you know, diagnoses. I'm calling my dad more frequently um, because of his follow-up and his, his cancer and his situation and him being at home um, and trying to keep himself isolated. So let's really be aware of that. And, and care for individuals on a very personal level. And when I say personal level, again, I'm not talking about a text. Uh, texts are great, but we're in a time frame where we need to be offering personal voice inflection, care. If they're crying and they need compassion, then we offer compassion. Uh, but you can't always tell when somebody's really broken in their voice unless you talk to them. So pick up the phone, call, and talk to people of the congregation and challenge yourself challenge yourself to do at least one but if you're not working if you're working from home and you have a lot of flexibility um, and then I would challenge you to five and make them a significant phone call make them and make sure you're asking them some specific questions get to know their need care for them uh, this is where God's church really shines is when we show the love of Jesus Christ um, so that was one thing that the board really talked about. Uh, another thing that the board talked about was going forward in our gatherings. Uh, as a pastor, I have really been burdened with the reality that we're not going to have uh, people coming together and celebrating the beauty of Jesus Christ, of his salvation, of the power of God. And uh, it's been weighing on me. When I was a kid, my dad went ahead and he planted a church in Eugene, Oregon. And one of those sites that he planted on was a drive-in movie theater. And I believe God doesn't waste a thing. And as that was drawn back to my attention this last week, the Holy Spirit began speaking to me and talking to me about how we can bring people back together of all ages, even, the, even those who are at risk, because they can drive into our church. Okay? Because we have a parking lot and a facility set up where we could potentially set up a platform outside have people drive into the parking lot and all face the same direction, set up the stage, the temporary stages that we have, bring out the simple sound system that we have a backup of, bring it all out and have a worship service like a drive-in movie theater style. And by doing that, we can help people feel like they're not alone. And if they come in and they drive in and they, they park, even waving at people through windows or unrolling a window and and being at that six foot distance and being able to say hi from one car to another is going to make a big difference, I believe. 
And so uh, we are planning for Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday to be drive-in church. And there will be more information coming up on that. Uh, you know, we're thinking some creative things. We are ordering the pre-packaged uh, wafers and communion juice so that there's you just drive in and you open up and you pick up from a from a table or something there as you drive in so that you have those that you need for your con for your family in the car uh, we we do some other things like that so that we have an opportunity to participate in holy communion together we have a, an opportunity to sing songs of praise together we have an opportunity to hear God's word together pray together and know that we're not alone and that is a big thing I'm looking forward to the drive-in church on Palm Sunday and and on uh, Easter Sunday uh, again we'll be talking a lot more about that coming up and I'll be posting more information as we progress on that uh, we'll be working out the kinks on Palm Sunday and on then before Easter Sunday we're gonna do a big push because I believe there's gonna be more than our congregation who's gonna be hurting and wanting to get together with more and I'm hearing other churches around the US that are doing some some drive-in churches and so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do a push for it we'll, we'll advertise for it we'll promote it for it and try to get other people to get out of their homes and feel be able to feel like they're part of the body of Christ and just minister to our, our Christian brothers and sisters in this way and I really am looking forward to it um, as we're going along and and you're watching this if you're watching us on Facebook live I'd encourage you to go ahead and put questions in uh, that you might be thinking so that if I see them pop up and I'm watching them on this screen right here that I then would respond to those even now um, so we've addressed right now the first and foremost is that we're canceling services uh, for this week and next week as far as being in-person services at the point that we are canceling all of our small groups that are in person at the point uh, through the end of this month as well uh, we will readdress the scheduling of, of those things as we move forward uh, but I anticipate they're also going to continue to be canceled with the closing of schools through the first of May uh, I do anticipate that we're going to have also uh, all of our small groups also canceled for in-person things throughout the month of April um, so we're doing that uh, which does also include our scouts our scouts aren't meeting in person um, beloved warriors are not meeting in person on Fridays uh, they have canceled their event that is coming up uh, in April because of this information and so uh, that's just like everyone else we're, we're all being affected by it um, and but it, I'm sorry <laughs> we'll be going doing the video worship services again this coming Sunday and we're trying to work Aiden and I are trying to work on some some better flow to that and then on Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday again we're gonna be working towards drive-in church at the point where you drive in like a movie theater style you turn your radio to a certain FM station and you can hear the music that we're going to be playing outside. We'll have a small, limited group. And, uh, uh oh, I got a message that said lost connection. It said finish. Hmm. I'm going to pause here for about 30 seconds and, and see if anything comes back up. I'm waiting. Sue Ann or anybody send a message that says you're still able to watch. It's about a 30 second delay. So we're waiting on YouTube, okay? We're waiting for those Facebookers. In the meantime, to you on YouTube, you don't have to watch all the nasty social stuff. All right, I just got a message that's still active. So, we're going on to other things. Uh, a couple weeks before we entered into this time frame, we talked about um, the property take uh, of the city coming through and taking part of our property for uh, the Worthsville Road work. Um, if you're interested in knowing what's going on with that, we have engaged with an attorney so that we can try to work out uh, that offer and that, that property take to be best stewards of what God has given us with our property um, and so that's going to be an ongoing bit of information and things that are going to be coming along so 
Uh, as things progress, we'll let you know. But right now, all we are is we've engaged an attorney uh, to, to help represent us for that. Uh, I don't think that there's a there's a whole lot more I need to communicate to you um, besides the whole wash your hands thing. Um, take it seriously and protect yourself. At our home, you know, even when groceries come home, they're sanitized and uh, they're they're wiped down. You know, when we go out and we come back in, uh, we're making sure that things like our keys and even going out back out to the car because we've been out in the public and touching doorknobs and handles and coming across people and grocery carts and everything else like that and we're wiping down steering wheels and everything again. It may seem excessive, but we're doing our part to try to stay as healthy as we can in our home uh, because I know for myself, that's gonna mean some things. Cell phones, wipe down your cell phones. If you've got kids in your house, guess what? Bad habits come about. Noses get picked, eyes get wiped, mouths get, you know, stuff gets pulled out of your, your mouth. So make sure that you're you're doing those things. Sue Ann just put a, a, a post up and reminded me um, that she spoke to Jan and Jackie about Children's Church Online, and they're all for it, and they're going to be uh, chatting and talking about trying to incorporate some Children's Church Online uh, for the those parents with kids who are typically in that group. Uh, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, we'll be looking at trying to put together some activity packs for those kids as well, since they'll be sitting in the car with you. Uh, it might be some links on our Facebook or on our uh, website that's going to take them to some videos if you have a cell phone with you and you can hand them their cell phone and listen to the, the story of Jesus. I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, we're working on it and we're excited about what we're going to try to try to do to make sure we're ministering to the whole family. Um, so those, those, those are some things that are, that are coming about. If you have some creative ideas, we encourage you to, to communicate them. You can text them to me. You can call me about it. You can, if you have something you run across on Facebook and say, wow, this is something we could do as a church uh, because of who we are, how God has positioned us, then I, what I want you to do is screenshot it if it's on your phone. If it's on your computer, shoot me a link. Do whatever you need to and get that information to us. Uh, we're excited about it. We're looking forward to, to seeing what can happen. Um, in the midst of all of this, you know, God, this doesn't take God by surprise at all. Uh, I, I think of that all the time. He is fully aware of what our needs are and what's going on in our lives. Um, before we entered into this time frame, we had recognized that our church has really been about uh, engaging God in, in greater spiritual formation. That that's what he's put on our hearts and you know there's an opportunity here for us to really allow that to shine for us to be transformed by his spirit for us to be transformed by his moving in us to not neglect the personal time to do family devotions together oh my goodness it can be so enjoyable if you don't have anything else going on sit down and read the, the uh, a devotional together there's great resources online. If you need anything, if you're looking for some, shoot me a text, shoot me a question, and we'll find, we'll be a resource and we'll do some research and find whatever we can for you. Um, there's, there's such a great opportunity for us to just love on people in unique ways. Uh, I know some churches are doing sending cards to people and that's a great means of, of writing down some things, but I'm going to tell you from a person who thinks about everything, you put a, a card in the mail that has some nice things on it and everything, and you send it off, and you lick the envelope to seal it, and then a child gets that, or a senior citizen gets that, and they open it up, and then they're engaging with whatever you had on, and, and if you were writing with anything, and if you had anything. <laughs> I'm not a fan right now. It's crazy, but I'm not. Uh, even when our mail comes in, after we open our mail and do our stuff, we're washing our hands because we don't know where what hands it's passing through. That may seem crazy. I want to be there for people when they're really, really in need and, and not be in a position where I know that I'm sick and I could be contagious. So um, I advise you to do the same. Think the long term. 
take a long-term vision of what God wants you to do in your life and in your capacity and be cautious and God's going to use you I believe that with all my heart he's going to use you to bless others and to encourage others and I'm excited about what's coming recap no face to face service this week it will be a video message again this week uh, no Bible studies right now until we'll re, re assess that after April 1st. Um, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, we are striving for drive-in church, and we will be looking and giving you more information on that. And again, take care of yourself. Call people. Call people. If you're working, challenge of one a day. If you're not working, challenge of five a day. That's your call, all right? Okay, if there's nothing else, then this is, this is the end of my video. It's been 20 minutes. I'm sure some of you have checked out and you're thinking already. God bless you. I love you. I'm proud of you. And, and I'm thinking and praying, about, praying for you constantly. God bless. Bye-bye.